Today on Famous Criminals, we are talking about a Canadian. Now, Canada is a country north of the U.S. We can't really trust them, I don't think. They got syrup-sipping polar bears that play hockey. Most people, including myself, assume that Canada is a safe place. Everybody's nice, and it's hard to commit crimes when you live in an igloo. Drake and Justin Bieber seem like they never even shoplifted before. And that's a good thing, by the way. I gotta be careful talking about Canada, though. I might anger some Canadians and they'll write me a strongly worded letter in French. It's okay, they won't watch this video. They're too far. I don't even think they speak English, do they? So obviously there is a dark side to the safest country in the world and we will get into it. So this guy's name is Pressa, more famously known as the Toronto Tarantula. He is from the Jane and Finch neighborhood in Toronto, which has a reputation of being the most dangerous neighborhood in all of Canada. This neighborhood has twice the unemployment of the national average, and one third of the people who live there collect social assistance. Most of the people there identify as gang members. Now, Pressa was born May 10th, 1996, and on June 15th, 1996, his dad killed a guy. I wonder if Canadians do drive-by shootings on snowmobiles. His dad was known as Prestige because of his record of convictions got him respect in Toronto. So the more convictions you get, the more respect you get. That's where his name comes from, Prestige. Now on the night of the murder, Prestige went to a community dance. I think that's just like a nightclub or something. There was a long delay entering the club, so he had to wait in a long line and I guess he started arguing with a volunteer security guard named David Williams. This dude was a volunteer. Why? Well, I guess it was a community thing. Prestige told David that he was gonna kill him, so he went into his car, grabbed a gun, and shot him. And my question to the audience is, do you think this murder was justified? How would you act if you were waiting in a line and some volunteer security guard was giving you attitude? And let me just remind everybody that murder is wrong. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> Since Prestige was in jail, Pressa had to grow up in a single parent household. And when you don't have a male influence in your life, you often turn to the streets. That's a story that's been told over and over again. My man Pressa, he wanted to be just like his dad. So he started gang banging as a young teenager. His gang was called Young Buck Killers and this gang was allegedly involved in a downtown shooting that spiraled into a case of kidnapping and sexual torture. Getting kidnapped by Canadians actually sounds fun. They'll be like, hey, get in the trunk, eh? We're gonna torture you, eh? In 2011, the Toronto police arrested 60 members of Young Buck Killers in a raid dubbed Project Marvel. They raided Press's home and found handguns linked to four different shootings. The police also found cocaine and ecstasy. Now somebody snitched and informed the police that Pressa's older brother was the leader and Pressa was second in command. His older brother was sentenced to 10 years and Pressa went to jail for 14 months. Now keep in mind he was a minor at the time. Pressa would again go to jail for attempted murder but he was able to beat the case after serving about 10 months. At this point in Pressa's life, he decided to focus on music. His first big song was called Novocaine, and I listened to a few of his songs, and they're not bad. It's kind of like cold weather music. His career started to pick up steam, and eventually he got Drake's attention. And you just know Drake studies whoever's popular, especially if they're from Canada. Presso was able to go on tour with Drake, which elevated him even more. We'll talk about his beefs briefly. Apparently, Presso mocked the death of Smoke Dog in his song Dracula, where he referenced Smoke Dog getting shot in the head. A rapper named Mustafa the Poet would respond to Pressa's diss on Snapchat. Mustafa posted a picture making fun of Pressa for being short. And honestly, most of these rappers are like 5'6", five, 5'7", five, cause it's rap. I mean, it's not basketball, bro. Pressa responded by saying Mustafa looks like R. Kelly when he came back from turning Muslim in jail. Now that's pretty funny. Mustafa responded by calling Pressa Alvin and the Chipmunks. Okay, uh, nobody died and there weren't any back and forth diss songs. This is how Canadians beef. Ready? 
At some point, Pressa started banging Koi LeRae, who is Ben Zeno's biological daughter. I feel like this is a good career move for Pressa since she's popping right now. She often posts pictures with him and even advertised his manhood on Twitter. So let that be advice for all you up and coming rappers. Just bang someone that's already famous to get your clout. It worked for this guy. Never discourage anyone who continually makes progress no matter how slow. I feel like Pressa has been slowly getting bigger over the years and it's good to see somebody rise up out of poverty. When he was living in the trenches, he knew that if he worked hard enough, he could eventually bang Benzino's daughter. And so can you. I'm out.